Our next unit of study in Algebra 2 is going to be rational functions. And with the rational functions, we're going to begin with an introduction into a concept called inverse variation. Now, inverse variation goes along very well with something we learned back in chat section, sorry, unit 2, and that is direct variation. In direct variation, the slope-intercept equation could be written in the form of y equals mx plus b, where b was always zero, so it became y equals kx, where our constant of variation, k, took the place of the slope. And k was always equal to the ratio of y divided by x, which was the equivalence of slope if you started with zero, zero. So inverse variation works the opposite of this. In direct variation, as one variable increases, the other one has to increase as well in order to for them to remain constant. Inverse variation, on the other hand, we have the equation y equals k divided by x. And k is our constant of variation again. And if we solve for k, k is always equal to the product of y and x. So if we can get a situation where we're always multiplying to the same thing, then we have direct variation, sorry, inverse variation. An example of this is let's say you have a set distance that you need to travel. And depending on your mode of transportation and the path that you take to get there, different speeds are possible. So if you have 60 miles to travel, What are different speed and distances, or times, that it will take you to get there? So your speed and your time. So if you travel at 3 miles an hour, well, it will take you 20 hours to get there. If you travel at 4, it will take you 15 hours to get there. If you travel at 10, uh, 5 miles an hour, it goes to 12 hours. 10 miles an hour is 6 hours. Uh, 30 miles an hour will take you two hours, and at 60 miles an hour, it will take you one hour. So each of these situations, if we were to find the product of each line of st points, they will always have the same product of 60. This is an inverse variation. As our speed increases, the amount of time it takes to complete the voyage will decrease. So how do we identify direct variation, inverse variation, or if something falls under neither category? Let's take a look at that. So three tables here, and let's look at each one. For the first table, x, y, we have 1 half, 40, 1 and 1 fifth, or 1 and 2 tenths, 12, 2, 10, and 2 and a half, 6. If we constantly divide y by x, looking for direct variation, 40 divided by a half is 80, 12 divided by 1 and 2 tenths is 10, 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 6 divided by 2 and a half is 1, no, sorry, 2 and 2 fifths. Now if we go for inverse variation, constantly multiplying them, we get 20, uh, 14 and 4 tenths, 20 and 15. So since the products are not constant, nor are the uh, quotients constant, we have to conclude that this is neither form of variation. Next, let's look at the second table. 2 tenths, 40, 5 tenths, 16, 1, 8, 2, 4. Let's try looking at inverse, uh, direct variation first. So we're going to take 40 and divide it by 2 tenths, and we get an answer of 200. 16 divided by half is 32, 8 divided by 1 is 8, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we do not show 
direct variation here. Our quotients are not the same. Let's look at inverse variation. What is the product? What is 2 tenths of 40? And the answer is 8. 16 times a half is 8. 8 times 1 is 8. And 2 times 4 is 8. Since our products are always the same, this shows inverse variation. Same as our road trip example. Next, let's look at the quotients of our last table. 8 divided by 2 tenths is 40. 20 divided by half is 40. 40 divided by 1 is 40. And 60 divided by 1 and a half is also 40. So we have the same quotient all the, si all the time. This shows direct variation. So looking for quotients and looking for products will help us to identify these. Now using inverse variation, if x and y vary inversely, x is 6 when y is negative 7, we need to find a couple things. We need to be able to find the constant of variation and we need to be able to use this for other situations. So our constant, we know, for inverse variation is going to be the product of x and y. So k is going to equal 6 times negative 7, which is going to equal a negative 42. Now, let's say we need to know what y is if x is 2. So we will have y equals a negative 42 divided by 2, and we get negative 21. So, as you can see, 2 times negative 21 is negative 42. 6 times negative 7 is also a negative 42. When solving for unknown values in a direct variation, you can use proportions in order to solve it. The methodology is a little bit different with dealing with inverse variations. Now that we have the ideas of direct and inverse variation both at our disposal, we can also look at something called a combined variation. And with combined variation, it simply states that we have multiple activities happening. And one variable is related to another or a set of others in groups of ways. And to give examples of this, I've pulled some formulas that are used often in geometry. So for our first one, V varies jointly with H and the square of R. So with this, jointly means that things are going to be happening at the same time and that both are direct. So, writing a formula for this, V varies jointly, so we need some constant of variation, with H and the square of R. So we get R squared. So what volume formula do you know that has H R squared or R squared H in it? And this is the formula for volume of a cylinder. So our constant of variation here is pi. So V equals pi R squared H. Pi R squared being the area of a circle, circular base of a cylinder, H the height of the cylinder. Now our next one, B varies directly with A and inversely with H in a triangle. So looking at the pieces, we have B varies directly, so K times A varies directly with A and inversely with H. So inverse variation shows that we are dividing by H. And this is in a triangle. A is area, B is the base, H is the height. So our constant of variation in a triangle, normally for the area we go one-half base times height. When we solve the inverse operation, the inverse relationship, we get multiplying by 2, so B equals 2A over H. This is your inverse function for finding the base of a triangle if you know the height and the area. And there are many different types of Com combined variations that can happen when dealing in Algebra 2 and starting to get application. 
One such application that I know of is in the world of physics. Any two objects that have a mass have a gravitational pull toward one another. The amount of gravitational pull varies directly with the product of the masses of the two objects and inversely with the square of the distance between their centers. Physicists use the gravitational constant of the universe, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, as the constant of the equation. The mass of the sun is 1.9891 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. The mass of the earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And the average distance between them is 1.496 times 10 to the 11th meters. What is their gravitational force? So, first thing we need to do is take this information and organize it into a combined variation equation. So, the gravitational pull, G, varies directly, so equals some constant times the mass of the two objects, so that would be mass 1 times mass 2, and inversely, sorry, we had directly before, with the square of the distance between their centers, divided by d squared. And we're told that the constant is the gravitational constant of the universe, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. Now, using these pieces, we can fill out in our formula g equals 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. Now the mass of the Sun is 1.9891 times 10 to the 30th. The mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. So a little bit of work here with scientific notation. And all this is being divided by the distance between them squared because we have an inverse relationship here. So we get 1.496 times 10 to the 11th squared. Now running through and simplifying this expression we come out with the gravitational force between the Sun and the Earth as 3.545 times 10 to the 22nd. And the unit is Newtons. But this is a rather large number. The Earth has a large mass. The Sun has a very large mass. And it's that mass that helps to pull the Earth in towards the Sun. Every eight minutes, our planet moves one planet space around in its orbit. And the only thing that keeps us from flying out into space is the incredible amount of gravity that the sun has pulling us in. And the balance of us trying to escape out into space and the pull of the sun keep us in place. So inverse, direct, and combined variation will be used a lot in our study of rational functions. So make sure you understand these concepts as a starting point and be ready to move forward.